So we'll begin. Uh, the next item of business is a statement by Aileen Campbell on developing a new diet and obesity strategy for Scotland. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. Call on Aileen Campbell. Minister, 10 minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm delighted to update Parliament on our proposals for improving diet activity and weight in Scotland and to announce the publication of our consultation document. This forms part of our wider efforts on public health to improve Scotland's health and ensure the sustainability of our NHS. As the nation's waistline expands, so too does the cost of dealing with the challenges posed by obesity, the cost to our NHS, the cost to our economy, and importantly, the human cost of poor health and well-being. Over the past 15 years, progress towards meeting our national dietary goals has remained stubbornly challenging. Recent Scottish Health Survey figures show that in Scotland, two-thirds of us are overweight or obese. One in five children are at risk of overweight or obesity. And of great concern is that this particular health problem is more marked in our most deprived areas where the obesity rates for children are very substantially higher. Poor diet is associated with 13 types of cancer, heightened risk of type 2 diabetes, and a range of cardiovascular and other conditions that can be debilitating and can shorten life expectancy. The statistics are important, but we must also understand the implications this has on the day-to-day -day lived experiences of people, their happiness and their sense of well-being. That lived experience I heard about today whilst at Heart of Midlothian football fans in training session, hearing from people like Wattie, who has described his transformed life through fit and losing weight. And I'd like to thank Hearts for hosting us today. Presiding officer, what makes the obesity challenge uh, all the more heartbreaking is that we know much of this poor health can be avoided and prevented. We know that if we get the strategies approach correct by intervening early enough, appropriately and correctly, that we can help people and communities avoid poor health, prolong life expectancy and enjoy life. That is a goal worth pursuing. This strategy outlines the way we believe we can help shift the culture of poor health and obesity from being the norm towards good health and positive choices being embraced. Scotland has an exciting opportunity to lead the way. But it's important we recognise the progress that has been made and that whilst acknowledging that some problems persist and remain, we are not embarking on this from a standing start. The Healthy Living Programme supports healthier options in grocery stores. The Healthy Living Award recognises good practice in catering settings. The healthcare retail standard in the NHS shows how promotions can be rebalanced towards healthier food. And football fans in training and the Daily Mile are living proof that regular physical activity is achievable, no matter what your age is. This work and commitment has helped slow the rate of weight increase. But just as we have on other major public health matters, we recognise the need to go a lot further. And that's why I'm publishing a, poll, a bold plan for improving diet, weight and activity for Scotland. There is no simple solution, there is no quick fix, but a growing body of evidence points to the action we must take to make a real and tangible difference to people's lives, communities and the country as a whole. I'm grateful to Obesity Action Scotland, Cancer Research UK and others for their important work in this area. There are three main pillars of our proposed approach and I would like to focus on them in turn. I'm clear that improving the food environment is the single biggest challenge, change we need to see in Scotland. The reality is that many of us find it challenging to make healthy choices in an environment where food and drink high in fat, salt and sugar is cheap, widely available and heavily promoted. I don't doubt for a minute the value of food labelling and other ways to help people make informed decisions, but the odds are stacked against most shoppers. We have data showing that 35% of all food and drink purchased in Scotland is on price promotion, around double that of Germany, France and Spain. And we know that high fat, salt and sugar food is more likely to be bought on promotion compared to healthier alternatives. Cancer Research UK's recent survey found that 89% of parents in Scotland believe supermarket promotions influence what they buy, with more than half stating that multi-buy offers lead to them buying more junk food than they really want. Therefore, consistent with our programme for government, this new strategy proposes action to restrict the promotion of food and drink high in fat, salt and sugar. And we look forward to hearing people's views both here and beyond the parliamentary chamber during consultation on how best we collectively approach this. The first steps will be to consider what high fat, salt and sugar products and types of promotions should be targeted, such as multi-buy or X for Y. 
There is more we can do and will do to improve the environment, particularly to protect children from exposure to junk food advertising. It is disappointing that the UK government did not take the opportunity to extend current restrictions on broadcast advertising before the 9pm watershed. Many credible commentators have identified this as a crucial measure in the fight against obesity. And if a commitment is not forthcoming, we will request that the relevant powers are devolved to the Scottish Government. Presiding Officer, we will not let this matter drop. In contrast, using the devolved powers that we have, use them, we will. That is why we will seek to extend the current restrictions on non-broadcast advertising on junk food to places commonly used by children. These could include streets or locations such as visitor attractions and safer routes to schools. Presiding officer, if we want to make good on our shared ambition to make Scotland the best place to grow up, then we must ensure we provide our children with the best chance and environment to be healthy. Presiding officer, earlier I spoke about weight as a major contributory factor to a serious disease, and I also said that much of this is preventable. Let me put that into perspective. Over a quarter of a million people have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in Scotland. Around 9% of the health budget is used on their care. We know 87% are overweight. More worryingly, Diabetes UK estimates that a further half million are at risk of developing type 2. And although at the extreme, around 1,700 people have had a major lower limb amputation as a result of their diabetes. This is all preventable. In a population of 5 million, those costs are significant. The cost to people and their families, the cost to our health services and the cost to our economy. They give us strong economic and health imperatives to act. Type 2 diabetes is an example of where we can have a significant impact. We know that losing weight and maintaining healthy weight can improve the health and lives of people affected by type 2. Even more important, if we can delay, prevent and even reverse the onset of this disease. This strategy therefore signals our intention to establish supported weight management as a core part of treatment for people with or at risk of type 2 diabetes. This is entirely consistent with our aspiration to offer a world-class diabetes service. And to support this work, I can announce that we propose investing 42 million over the next five years to support the delivery of this ambitious, innovative and potentially transformative approach. This consultation also proposes action in many other important areas, early years, because we know that habits formed in childhood can last a lifetime. Leadership, where the scale and pace of change needed will require long-term commitment right across the public, private and voluntary sectors. And physical activity, because we know that an active lifestyle alongside a healthy food environment will be to the lasting benefit of everyone in Scotland. Presiding officer, this government and this parliament has led, on the way, has led the way on public health with its groundbreaking strategies on smoking and alcohol. We must now focus on the next great challenge, diet, weight and activity, in the knowledge that we are at our best when we are bold. In doing so, we must keep people at the forefront of our minds. As Minister for Public Health, I've, been, I've seen firsthand how lives are transformed by healthier weight and diet. And that happens when people are empowered, enabled and equipped with the ability to make positive decisions about what they eat. It's about ensuring good habits are established in the early years and it's about educating our teenagers with the knowledge they need as they emerge into their own adulthood. That, that's what enables them to make choices that sustain good, healthy lives for themselves and as potential parents of the future. The consultation paper I am publishing today sets out an ambitious and forward-thinking set of proposals. Over the coming months, I look forward to many conversations around the country about our ideas and considering the many ideas that I know will come to us. If people think there is a case for going further, we will certainly look at it. Presiding officer, this parliament is at its best when it works together across political boundaries, united by a desire to create a better Scotland for us all. Because regardless of the bumps that we will no doubt encounter along the way on this journey, if we succeed, then we stand to gain the biggest prize a healthier, happier and fairer Scotland. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister.
The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement and tend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we must move on to the next item of business. Be helpful if those members who wish to ask a question ensure that they press the request to speak button now. I call on Miles Briggs. Mr Briggs, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I start by thanking the Minister for prior sight of her statement and welcome the Scottish Government's intentions in launching this consultation on a new diet and obesity strategy for Scotland. And it cannot come sooner enough because we know, as the Minister has outlined today, two-thirds of Scottish adults are overweight and nearly a third of children in Scotland now are deemed as at risk. Turning this around requires support from all government departments, public institutions, businesses and all sides of this chamber and I very much take that on board. One of the key priorities which the Health and Sport Committee has become acutely aware of is the need for a cross-portfolio cross approach to this. And I hope the Minister will look to how that is taking forward across all local authorities and across all ministries within Parliament. And I hope today actually will mark a point when we can look back and actually see how this Parliament has made a real difference. And maybe that also comes down to the fact that today we will also need to make sure we see an end to the potential SNP swim tax which was going to propose extra charges on some of our leisure facilities and how that would fit into this strategy. So can I therefore ask, how will the progress of this strategy be measured by the government? Minister. Thank you, thank you. And I thank uh, Miles Briggs uh, and for his question, acknowledge his interest and also I think his, uh, his uh, suggestion as well that there is a willingness to work across political parties to make sure that we can make good on the aspirations that I've set out uh, today. Uh, and of course, he's absolutely right to make sure that public health demands the attention of not just the health department, but all part departments across government, and also beyond that, between our local authorities and other public uh, and private uh, bodies uh, as well. The, the strategy that I set out uh, and the consultation uh, document I set out also indicates where there can be cross-portfolio working, whether that's in education or also in planning, the planning world as well, about how we plan and shape the spaces and places that we live in to make sure they are conducive to healthier, happier lives and also nudge us in the direction towards making active travel choices. The programme for government also articulates that desire to see us working across portfolios to make sure that we can create the healthier country that I think we all seek to create. So I hope that gives some reassurance that there is a, a desire right across government to work collaboratively, work together, disregard those boundaries that are set within ministerial portfolios because life doesn't fit into one single neat uh, ministerial portfolio. In terms of how we'll measure success, that's why we've focused in the way that we have on diabetes, on promotion in early years. We can measure some of the impact of our success with, through the um, primary one uh, weight uh, and chart the improvements that we are, uh, when we take the weight of primary ones and chart that improvement, we can see and track promotions, uh, purchasing through our endeavours to tackle the promotion of unhealthy foods. And also the Sky Diabetes database can evidence uh, the improvement that we seek to make on that. So I hope that kind of provides reassurance that this is not just a strategy designed to simply be warm words. There are clear ways in which we want to measure success because there is determination in this great health challenge that we face in Scotland that we need to tackle it and be evidence based in our approach. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Can I also thank the Minister for prior sight of her statement? President Officer, the obesity crisis is the single biggest public health challenge facing Scotland today, and one that sadly too often impacts on our most deprived communities. Two thirds of adults overweight, over a quarter of children, the worst rates in the UK and among the worst anywhere in the world. It's clear that the current obesity route map has not reached its milestones, and bold, radical action is very much needed. Labour therefore very much welcomes the publication of this long overdue strategy and in particular the commitment to restrict the promotion of food high in fat, salt and sugar. I want to pay tribute to organisations such as Cancer Research UK and Obesity Action Scotland who have campaigned so effectively to ensure that at last the government has recognised the importance of regulation to make the healthy choice the cheaper choice for families. But at this 11th hour, will the Minister give a clear commitment that this consultation exercise will not be used in any way to water down a commitment to tough regulation, whatever pressure she may come under? And will the Minister also accept it that one of the reasons for the lack of effectiveness of the existing obesity route map was the failure to have regular comprehensive measures of success and therefore ensure that the new strategy will be underpinned by clear and forcible targets, not just those for diabetes, diabetes and these will be monitored 
and evaluated on a regular basis by this Parliament so we don't have to wait another six years should we need to change course again. Minister. Thank you and again thank Colin Smith and acknowledge his support and welcome for the consultation document and for his particular welcome on our intentions to restrict um, or for restrictions on high fat uh, sugar and salt foods. Um, and I agree with what he says around the work that has been uh, taken forward by Cancer Research UK, Obesity Action Scotland and a whole host of other organisations out there that represent many of the illnesses the, and the conditions that are associated with obesity for setting uh, the tone for us to be able to move forward with momentum uh, on this journey of tackling obesity and the challenges that it poses us. And I can be very uh, cannot be more uh, straightforward. We want to restrict marketing uh, and promotions uh, of high fats, sugar and salt foods. There is no intention for us to do what I think was what happened in the UK government's proposals where they set out a consultation that indicated a direction of travel and then unfortunately with the, uh, when, the public, the consult, when their strategy was published that they fell short of some of the uh, aspirations that I think had been built up uh, around that. That is not our intention. We will certainly be bold, imaginative, innovative and de determined to make a difference on this issue. And we, of course, will listen to what others have to say on this. You know, I, I noticed that sometimes there was a bit of begrudging tone in some of what Colin Smith says. I'm not sure if he intended that, but hopefully during the 12 week plus consultation process that we have, that will give them some time to formulate some ideas of their own, as opposed to just simply coming to the chamber, asking us to do more, but not necessarily always specific, being specific on what more action we need to take forward. I hope then, therefore, that the 12-week consultation process gives uh, Colin Smith and his colleagues time to bring us some ideas. Uh, thank you. I have 10 members wanting to ask questions. I've only got 15 minutes, so I want short questions, sharp questions, and if I may also say, uh, Quite brief answers, if possible, please, Minister. Marie Todd, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I welcome the boldness and ambition in this statement. Environmental factors may play a role in determining both nutrition and physical activity. Can the Minister expand on how the Scottish Government intends to work to change the obesogenic environment in order to change behaviours? Minister. Um, again, I recognise the real interest that Marie Todd has expressed in her role within the committee and also in the parliamentary chamber on this issue. And we have set out a number of actions that we want to take forward within the, the strategy to challenge that and change that obesogenic environment that is uh, so unfortunately conducive to obesity. That's why we have the ac uh, actions to restrict the price promotions on food and drink products, on high fat, salt and sugar foods, our action to extend current restriction on broadcast and non-broadcast advertising of junk food to reduce exposure, especially of children, to those uh, foods. Uh, also, the plans that we have to develop an out-of-home strategy, which will include action on better labelling, calorie caps and portion control. And, of course, we want to make sure that we're in a position to support our SMEs to reformulate to increase the range of healthier options available. All of that, a package of measures, will, I hope, go a long way towards uh, changing that obesogenic culture. Brian Whittle, followed by Neil Finlay. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also welcome the statement from the Minister as she's highlighted obesity is linked to many other uh, complications and conditions. Uh, driving behavioural change will be crucial in any successful obesity strategy, and this will be most effective, I feel, in the younger age group. So can I ask the, the Minister what focus the consultation will have in early intervention, both in terms of our relationship with food and access to physical activity, irrespective of background or personal circumstance? And will malnutrition be addressed? No, I'm sorry, well? one question, Minister. It's a really good question as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Brian Whittle. Again, you know, <laughs> the spirit of being uh, recognised and that there is cross-party support for some of the approaches we're taking forward, recognise his keen interest in this. Early intervention will absolutely be uh, the focus of what we do here. We don't want to wait until a problem presents itself before we effectively tackle it. But early intervention cannot just be uh, associated with action in the early years. Early years is a big part of this, the strategy. Uh, ideas that we've put forward and that will be around making sure we use opportunities around the expansion of childcare, the fact that we have a range of different things going on around looking at what the food that are, is given to children when they're in a school setting, making sure we use the opportunities within the classroom to instill good habits early on. Early intervention though and must not just be about early years and so there's a range of measures with prevention being the hallmark of our approach. Thank you Neil. Finlay followed by Jenny Gilruth. 
Uh, obesity used to be a condition of the wealthy. It's now a condition of the poor. Uh, what has been done to address the key issue contributing to obesity, namely poverty and food poverty? Minister. There are a range of actions. My colleague Angela Constance has set out um, a number of different actions that she and her colleagues, Jean Freeman, around how we create a, a healthier, a, a fairer country, making sure that with the powers that are coming to this parliament are delivered, the social security benefits are delivered in a fair and equitable way with dignity at the hallmark of their approach and making sure that we tackle child poverty and a range of other things to ensure that we create the, the, the we challenge the inequalities that too often persist and recognising that obesity is one of the things that has most impact in our most vulnerable communities eh, as well. So um, it, there's a range of things. And going back to what Miles Briggs says, this is not just about me taking forward a strategy on my own. This has got cross eh, portfolio interest right across <coughs> government to make sure that we have a whole country approach to tackling this problem. Jenny Gilruth followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Minister outline how the Scottish Government's obesity plan will link with Curriculum for Excellence, and does she agree that the plan offers an opportunity for schools in terms of ensuring the health and well-being of their pupils? And in this respect, I should also declare an interest as the Education PLO. Minister. Thank you. Curriculum for Excellence, as Jenny Gilruth, does provide us uh, with opportunity to ensure that pupils develop a full understanding of food issues in their widest sense. For example, learning how to cook, food choices and influences of <coughs> advertising and culture. Our proposals in the strategy will look to ensure that such work begins in those important early years and with parents and continues through preschool facilities, ensuring a national <coughs> natural progression of device and engagement. It's important that we also recognise that this work doesn't stop just outside of primary school, that actually we need to work hard to target our, and support adolescents. If we intervene early in the early years, that work could potentially unravel if we don't have the support for our adolescents when they emerge into their own adulthood. So we need to make sure that there's age appropriate uh, uh, advice and support there at every part of a, a young person's life journey. Alison Johnson, followed by Gail Ross. Um, thank you. Along with Cancer Research and Obesity Action Scotland, Greens firmly support restricting price promotions and I hope the Consultation is about how we restrict these rather than if we'll restrict them. And how also will the strategy make healthier food more affordable? And how will it support producers of that healthy food Minister. directly? Absolutely. There is no intention to shy away from the big things we need to do, particularly around uh, restricting uh, marketing and the promotions of foods high, fat, uh, high in fat, sugar and salt. Uh, there is absolutely opportunity for Alison Johnson to contribute over the lifetime of this consultation to make sure that that is a message that we hear loudly and clearly to continue with the determination that we have. Um, and I will put on record also that we do intend to work and continue to work with industry on this and particularly with our small and medium sized enterprises around the reformulation of the things they need to do need to do to adapt and that's why we set out 200,000 pounds uh, to support um, companies small and medium enterprises to, to respond to the challenges that they will face. Gail Ross for by Alec Cole Hamilton. Thank you. Would the Scottish Government agree with me that all health boards and local authorities should develop strategies and performance indicators which strive to reduce obesity in children? Thank you. Minister? We would certainly encourage um, the use particularly of the health visiting pathway, for instance, and with the opportunities that presents to ensure greater measurement for children and their own uh, indicators. And we'd encourage certainly local authorities to use this information to take action in partnership with others. Furthermore, our intention is also to maintain and expand existing child healthy weight uh, uh, work, uh, which is happening right across the country. But I, I recognise the point that Gil Ross makes, and absolutely we want to see and expect our boards and our uh, authorities to make uh, and take forward appropriate work. Alec Cole Hamilton, followed by Tom Arthur. Thank you. Does the Minister agree that physical activity in early years has to be more than just the provision of the daily mile in our schools? But in recent years, there's been a quiet erosion of unstructured sessional activity for young people in our community. So will the Minister commit to putting increased access both to youth work and play at the heart of the obesity strategy? Minister. There is absolutely a, 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 a real progression from children in the early years, the, the coordination skills, the ability to throw and catch and all those things that they learn from play. And that's why the play strategy was so important because it gave the seriousness that play required to ensure that children had the best start in life. And that allowed, allows uh, young people, particularly we see from Judy Murray, Judy Murray played 
simple games with our children and look where that led to her children. So it puts in firm, the firm foundations for young people to then proceed, if they want to, into elite sport, but also, I hope, to instill good habits to be active, enjoy their childhood and to be active and, and enjoy sport later on. Tom Arthur, followed by Annie Wells. President Officer Scotland has a thriving food and drink sector and with FDF Scotland estimating that 97% of that sector is composed of micro to medium sized businesses, can the Minister outline what support will be provided to SMEs to enable them to reformulate their products to support the delivery of the Scottish Government's ambition? Minister. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why we um, set out in the, in the consultation document that we would um, <coughs> set up a fund, 200,000, uh, to uh, help support those small and medium enterprises that will require perhaps a bit of support around uh, responding to the, uh, the, consult the strategy that we take forward. That will not only just be a financial offering, there will be advice there and support in kind from, for instance, our agency Food Standards Scotland that will provide the expertise, the knowledge uh, to uh, support uh, those businesses in that transition. So financial and support and advice in kind as well, which will be crucial to support our uh, and very important SMEs that are the lifeblood of our economies across the country. Annie Wells, followed by Claire Hockey. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. What plans does the government have for health checks for 14 and 50 year olds, having scrapped them during their time in office? And how will this strategy help address diet, activity and healthy weight for older Scots? Minister. Well, I've set out certainly a lot of uh, um, detail in the consultation document around uh, the proposals we take forward for type 2 diabetes, which I think will <coughs> really positively impact on the, the age group that Annie Wells uh, speaks about. Uh, so there are a range of issues. It's not and also, it's important to recognise that unlike the UK government's strategy, which just focused on children, this is a whole population. Uh, this is impactful for the whole population. It's uh, designed to try and shift at every age and stage that this will uh, be impactful for uh, everybody across the country should they require support. I see she's shaking her head. That's the fact. This approach is very different to the one that the UK government took forward. And actually, what would be helpful would be if the Conservative Party here applied the same pressure to their own colleagues down south to get them to stop having shying away from uh, having a, a not going forward with a 9pm watershed to ban junk food advertising for our most vulnerable people in society, our children. Last question, Claire Hockey. Plays a significant role in the development of type 2 diabetes, amongst other conditions. Can the, cabinet, uh, can the uh, minister outline what steps will be taken to assist those who are most at risk of developing type 2 diabetes? Minister. Thank you. The diabetes uh, prevention framework, which has been developed by an expert group, complements our strategy proposals and is considering such uh, identification of high risk groups, supports early diagnosis and the important question of referral pathways to treatment, education uh, and lifestyle management and is a fundamental pillar of our whole approach around how we effectively uh, prevent the escalation of type 2 diabetes across the country. Thank you. That concludes questions. I have a short pause while the front bench has changed before we move on to the next item of business.